is a review of cis and trans isomerization. When you have a molecule that has restricted rotation about one of its carbon-carbon bonds, for example, in a carbon-carbon double bond, which is unable to rotate due to the, the pi bonding, when, when you have this restricted rotation around one of the carbon-carbon bonds, you have the possibility for the existence of cis and trans isomers of a particular molecular formula. For example, um, this particular molecule, which is not fully represented by this model, but this model is used to represent a four carbon alkene, uh, CH3, CH, CH, CH3. Hydrogens are not being shown. With the double bond in the middle, in between carbon 2 and carbon 3, this molecule is not free to rotate. You can have the same connectivity with this particular molecule, CH3, CH, CH, CH3. These two molecules are different from each other, not in terms of their connectivity, but in terms of their spatial orientation. In this particular molecule, the atoms are arranged in kind of a zigzag pattern across the double double the carbon carbon double bond. In this molecule, the atoms are arranged in more of a U-shaped pattern across the double bond. These two molecules are not identical. You can't rotate this this particular model to end up with the structure that looks like this. You can't flip it. The only way that you can go from this structure to this one with models is to break a carbon-carbon bond and reform it. When you can't twist your model kit to get from one structure to another, that tells you that they are two totally different molecules. When we have these two totally different molecules, we distinguish them from each other using the cis and trans notation. When we have the carbon chain on the same side of the double bond, we call that the cis isomer, cis same, cis same, cis same. And when we have the carbon chain spanning across the double bond, we call that the trans isomer. So this molecule is a cis isomer. This molecule is the trans isomer. When the examples that we did in class were with pretty simple molecules like these two, and all you had to do is look and see whether the, the carbon chain was staying on the top or the bottom of the double bond or whether it was going across the double bond. There are some trickier examples in your textbook that I'm going to do um, for practice here. And these are out of the problems at the end of chapter 3. In the new book, it's problem 333. I'm not sure if the number is different from the old book or not. So here is the first example. This is 333D. And the problem is actually asking you to look at these structures and identify which of them represent the same compound and which of them are different. So identifying these as cis and trans is not the purpose of the problem that it's written, but I think it's a good collection of alkenes to practice assigning cis and trans notation to. So some of these may be the same molecule, just drawn in a different way, but that's not going to be the purpose of what we're doing here. So these molecules are a little bit trickier because on there, one of the carbons in the carbon-carbon double bond, you actually have two things branching off that carbon. So here, this particular carbon atom's got two groups on it. This carbon atom has got two groups on it. This one, same thing. Um, down here, it's the same thing. And this carbon's the same thing. This one is more like the examples that we looked at in class, where you just have one carbon chain spanning across the molecule. This, because the carbon chain goes from one side of the double bond to the other, this is the trans isomer. Now let's look at one of the trickier ones. Up here, where you have two functional groups on one of the carbon atoms of the alkene, you have to figure out for yourself, am I looking at this chain or am I looking at this chain? And we haven't got to the specifics on this yet. We will come to it later on in the quarter. 
But basically what you want to look at at this point is the longest carbon chain. So here's the longest carbon chain, and the longest carbon chain goes across the double bond. Not on the same side, it's trans. Again, we want to look at the longest carbon chain, and this long carbon chain does not, it goes across the double bond, does not stay on the same side, so this is trans. And over here again, we're going to look at the longest carbon chain. This carbon chain stays on the same side of the double bond, so this is a cis isomer. Down here, we're going to look again at the longest carbon chain. It goes across the double bond, so it's a trans isomer. This longest carbon chain goes across the double bond, so it's trans.